Before we get started, let's just say this is an enclosure video, and it's not going to involve foam or any of the fun times that Bill of Punish Prompts and I had. This is actually a professional product, and I'd love to show you on the Ultimaker. I'm Joel, this is 3D Printing Nerd. There's Sean at the Premier Pro working workstation, putting together videos for the 3D Printing Nerd channel. You may remember the last time we talked about a 3D printer enclosure. We were talking about the CR10 and Bill of Punish Props and I were back here slaying some foam in a half hour wonderful tribute to probably not the best way to do something. But we had a lot of fun and even though I got roasted to shreds, I'm still very much proud of the fun that we had. Plus Bill and I had tacos. You can't go wrong with tacos. And since then, actually, the CR10 went to Robert. He's known as K9 on the Twitterverse. Robert and his lovely bride Cat run merch minion. It was his birthday. I thought, what better way than to give someone a 3D printer for their birthday? And I, I gave him the CR10 and the enclosure. We had Mexican food. I see a theme here. Anyway, the CR10 and the enclosure are now with someone who can give it their time, which means I have this to show you. This is a Acrylic, I think. I think it's an acrylic uh, enclosure for the Ultimaker 2 Plus. It's manufactured by Printed Solid and it's sold by Matter Hackers. Let's get out the knife of truth and be careful because that it's a heck of a blade right there. This is gonna be fun to unwrap. Maybe. Cardboard, cardboard, cardboard. Cardboard. Oh, here we go. Looks like this is going to be the door for the Ultimaker. We will set that aside. This is actually a really efficient way to wrap this sort of thing. I'm happy to know that. Ah, I've got directions. <laughs> Warning in big bright red letters. Do not over tighten the screws in the hood. That will result in much badness. Look at that. There's a bunch of screws and, and some gummy bears. I think it's it's pretty common in the 3D printing industry to uh, give out gummy bears. Oh, and also look at that. There is a magnet in there and wrapped around that magnet is this mess of screws. I'm guessing the magnets are for the door, kind of like what Bill and I did. I have quite a stack of uh, little giblets here. So, remove protective covering before assembly. Ooh. Oh, I ripped it. Hey, while you're watching me, take the uh, the covering off all of this acrylic. Let's talk about that last time that Bill and I were making that enclosure. A lot of people were saddened by that video, which I guess is okay. Bill and I just had a lot of fun. We were just, we were having a really good time and we were trying to make an enclosure. We didn't try anything beforehand. We just, I just measured and we went with it. And I'm sorry, some people didn't like it. It's totally understandable. Not everything on the internet is for everybody. And I hope that those of you who found that video to be not your liking, if you're back here watching a video, let's hope that the information provided in this video is more to your liking and we can get back to making some epic videos. <sighs> and it looks like the acrylic hinge or plastic hinge or some sort of hingey hinge is already put together and it uh, it hinges well. That's good to know. On to the next piece. This is packed really, really well. Oh, hey, you know, while I'm taking this off, feel free to open up another web browser or another tab and go over to 3d.pn. You can go to the, I think it's the shop link and this hoodie is available. It's really comfy. It's got this sweet design on it. Feel free to order one of those hoodies in the background while I'm removing this stuff. Hey, you know, this is a lot of work, but if it's worth it and I can keep the Ultimakers in the garage where the temperature fluctuates and isn't optimal for printing in especially like PETGs, ABSs, uh, that'd be nice. Smells like acrylic. Mmm. All right. Looks like we can put the knife away. It's a cool knife. This was sent to me for a fan mail Friday. I have the best fans. My goodness. The receiver, part A, which is this part here, can be attached by replacing two factory screws 
on the case with the included M20 screws and M3 washers. There's a washer. There are two washers. So now let's look over here. And that's gonna go like that so that I can open out. Okay, looks like um, that screw and that screw. You may notice this sweet 3D printing nerd front plate on my old maker, and that's thanks to Travis over at A Pyro Design. How cool is that? That's a good view right there, right there. That's a good view. So now we just need these. We need some washers. We're good to go. I was like, where'd that screw go? And it was in my hand. It goes in there. Second one goes in, y'all. And then it goes right there. Okay. There we go. Oh, this is easy. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. Awesome. Okay. All the other attachments can be done with the included M310 bolts and M3 square nuts. Cool. I want to give you a breakdown of how to attach it all together. I should lay them all out. Or at least find the ones I need. I need some blue tape. Now we're talking. Oh, that'll help quite a bit. See? Tape holds it together just fine. Um, I had an idea where I could maybe, I'll tell you what, let's try it. I honestly hope that if there are better ways of doing this, you tell me in the comments because I would love to hear about that. So what I've got, um, let's see, can you see here, right here? I got needle nose pliers. Those pliers can grip the small nuts a little bit better and then I can put them in here hopefully. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Oh, here we go. I can put them in through the top. Oh, and I just put my finger there. Oh, that's so good. Now it's going from the top with my finger underneath so that it'll catch it and then it works. Okay, since that's in, I guess we don't need that. And I can set it down. We've got C, E, F. Let's put the D on. Uh, is this it? I think it is. Oh, and it's gonna have nuts on the side too. Uh, this is a well thought out acrylic case. I must, I must tell you. Oh, okay, I'm supposed to put it to the top. No matter, I got it. The important part is I got it. Now we gotta take care of these on the side. Should be a smidge easier. <laughs> to just shove it through. <sighs> of course. All right, that side's tightened up, let's get this side all put in and tightened up. Let's say we're cooking with gas here. Now the back side. Oh, I see, and this has to go here first. Got it, I think. No, this one. Oh, it's far better. I knew I had the wrong piece. Um, okay, well, let's put it together. I need the tape again. I remember, I think I read in the directions, if you put a piece of tape on the underside, that will hold the nut so that you can then attach everything. There we go. I guess reading the instructions is important. Get this piece in the back to go. <laughs> Let's just hold it upside down. Let's put it together. One more piece, this one. I guess it goes right here in the back. That's it, it's together. Let's see if it goes on top. Hey, hey, hey. 
Just take the tape off. It'd probably look better. <laughs> Always something. Well, that's kind of cool. All right, there's some extra screws, some extra T-nuts here. Included with your kit is two magnets, which can be used in the upper right corner of the door to hold it while printing. I guess you could put some glue right here just to kind of hold the magnets. I wonder if one will hold, because then you could put one at the top, one at the bottom. Well, they do. Not super tight, but again, we're just looking to maintain an ambient temperature and to keep drafts from getting in and all that kind of stuff. Uh, wow, that was actually really easy to put together. It looks good on the machine, look at that reflect light. All right, so with the door in the front and this up top, this is a now fully enclosed Ultimaker 3D printer. I happen to have a brand spanking new roll of light blue ABS from Matter Hackers. And the goal is to put this in the garage and to print, I believe, we'll do what we were gonna do with the CR-10. We're gonna make one of uh, Devin and make anything. He makes cool vases. We're gonna slice a vase for this. We'll put it in the garage. We'll attempt to print. I'll try to put my temperature probe in here so we can get uh, a temperature reading of the internals compared to outside of the printer. So let me, uh, I'm gonna go get a drink of water. A little thirsty. I gotta eat these gummy bears. All right, I will see you in the garage. Hey, there it is. All right, the Ultimaker is in the garage. It's loaded with PLA right now, so I'm gonna take the PLA out, and then I'm gonna put in this ABS. And I've pre-sliced Make Anything's um, monochromatic vase in spiralized mode in Cura, and then we will print. So in it in there before was Proto Pasta's stainless steel PLA. Takes a little bit of filament to purge that nozzle, but I'm seeing some of the light blue, so I will hit ready. The printer will park itself. Now I need to find my thermometer, and we'll get the show on the road. Here's the thermometer right now. It shows 14.9 degrees Celsius, and it shows it out here. The little probe inside the printer is 18. 0.6 degrees Celsius. So we should see that temperature rise. I'm going to go to print the vase. All right, I'll use the magnets to close it up. And as the build plate warms up for your ABS temperatures, we should see that temperature rise. Here, let's move the camera so you can see. It looks like the little bit of ABS or filament poop that the Ultimakers deposited in the corner of build plates didn't stick, which is fine. It put down the, the outer perimeter, it put down the skirt, it's now putting down the first layer. It's gonna take a couple hours, this shouldn't be too bad. Right now it's 15 degrees C in my hand and it is uh, 23.5 inside. Curious to see what it gets up to in two hours. There we go, see you in a bit. Well, we're back upstairs and, you know, looking at this under studio lighting, I mean, it looks really good. There's, there's like one or two spots where it's like, wow, well, okay, maybe the print messed up a little bit, but otherwise, otherwise it's great. There's no lifting on the bottom, uh, any of the little jaggedy out points, I guess. None of those lifted, <laughs> none of those lifted. Uh, everything's even, it's symmetrical. It looks great. This was done at 0 0.15 millimeter layers. I used Ultimaker Cura defaults for ABS, uh, but on the Ultimaker 2 Plus itself, I did pump up the bed temperature from 80 to 90. The garage itself, 14 degrees centigrade. The Ultimaker enclosure itself maintained between 40 and 45 degrees centigrade. I know that that's not like a heated build chamber, but again, with ABS materials, we're just, we're, we're trying to keep whatever warmth is in there, in there, because we don't want temperature shifts and we don't want a breeze to get in. We want consistency across the lifetime of the print. And for this, uh, it's an ABS spiral print. So if it was going to curl, then in a single walled situation, it's, it's really gonna show some aberrations. I mean, it could be that the geometry of the model helped it print, but I am impressed. I'll tell you what, if it actually snows here in the Seattle area, we'll put the Ultimaker out in the snow and we'll do another print just to see if we can do it. Well, there you have it, a professional acrylic laser cut enclosure 
for the Ultimaker 2 Plus. Uh, I also happen to have an enclosure for the Ultimaker 3. So I'm gonna try some dual color ABS models just to see if I can. Last time I did that was on my Flash Forge Creator Pro three years ago. Ugh, God. Well, I'll tell you what, not that Bill and I didn't have some valid principles when we came up with our enclosure, but this is, this is perfect, you guys. This is, this is perfect. If you're going to be printing ABS or materials that require that consistent temperature and you don't wanna build your own enclosure, I mean, there's plenty of ways that you can do it. Plenty of ways, but this looks good and it works. So if you want one for yourself, I'll put a link down in the description. In fact, I'll put one for the Ultimaker 2 Plus and I'll put the link for the Ultimaker 3 enclosure as well because I know I'm gonna be getting that on my Ultimaker 3 and I'm gonna be making prints with it. It's just, I can't wait. Well, thanks for coming along on this little enclosure journey that we had with the Ultimaker. If you wanna support what I do, I, this is what I do full time, feel free to visit links down in the description. There's plenty of different ways that you can throw something my way to help ensure that I can keep feeding my kids and letting them grow big and strong. Beyond all that, I hope that you have a wonderful day, evening, breakfast, morning, lump of waffles, and I'll see you on the next one. And as always, high five.